Hello, my beautiful babies. Today on the show, we're going to be talking about King Arthur, Legend of the Flop. It was a huge disaster. What happened? Why did it bomb? What was my brother thinking? Now tell me story. Tell me every detail. Uh, Warner Brothers spent $175 million. They made $14 million back. It was really bad. Charlie Hunnam was terrible. He's in it. He plays King Arthur. It's not really based on Arthurian legend. It's kind of like really fantasy. It's very, very loose. Uh, so if you're like a fan of the Arthurian legend, like you're not going to be happy if you come to this movie, which is perplexing because it's like, that's your IP. What? Okay, whatever. But anyways, I am a bit of a movie masochist. I really, I take a special delight in watching bad films. Like I, 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 I love the, the best films and I love the worst films, you know? I like, I like both, because I, and I learned so much from watching shitty films, you know? And as Kubrick once said, you know, bad films gave me the courage to make one, you know? So it's like, I feel like I'm studying them, and that's part of the reason why I go see bad films. And also just because it's just fun to see something just flop. Like, just, I love seeing the studio just fucking piss their money away on some garbage. <laughs> it's just like, what are you guys, thinking like wow like it's really interesting to me you wanted to prophecy this is your prophecy Young. okay so it's directed by guy ritchie guy ritchie is famous from doing the movie snatch which is a really great movie i like snatch uh he's also done lock stock and two smoking barrels which i didn't it was like eh, it was kind of before it was this earlier thing and it was okay and some other, I don't know, he did some crap with Madonna because he was married to her for a while. And then uh, I did those Sherlock Holmes movies. I didn't really, I didn't really like those. And so this movie, Guy Ritchie, is very much doing his Guy Ritchie thing in this, you know, where, yeah, there's, there's, he's doing a style where there's all these people with crazy names, you know, like Gustav Bill, you know, it's like they kept, and they kept fucking saying that name like over and over again. And it's like, quit trying to make Gustav Bill happen. They're like, okay, Game of Thrones is hot. We have the King Arthur IP. Why don't we make a Game of Thrones, King Arthur, cool guy, richy thing with some fucking elephants that are as big as the island of Manhattan? Fuck it, you know? Because there was some huge fucking elephants in there. And I was like, that's really... I mean, it's, it was ridiculous how big... They had a fucking city on their back. So, yeah, I don't know. And it's, this movie made me, like... I don't know, I'm really... Like, I really don't want to see Guy Ritchie's Aladdin after this. You know what I'm saying? It was like, ooh. Like, what was the style like? How well, you describe it? Uh, choppy. And then there was these, like, montage. The whole movie was a montage. The whole movie was a montage. Oh. The whole movie was a montage. And then, like, you'd have these scenes where, like, Oi, let me tell you about my plan. And then they'd go about some fucking plan, all these people, and you don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I Actually, I never knew what was happening in the film. Um, <laughs> like, I didn't know. I was just like, whatever. So the directing style in this is very like, like, God damn it, they just moved that camera so much. Like, it would just be like, just all over the fucking place. And like, the edible was hitting and it was like a little, t I took a little too much because I was taking a tolerance break and I was like, oh no. And I'd eaten this cookie and all this popcorn and I was being a fatty and like, and then like, and much to my dismay during watching this film, I, I started to get motion sickness. And so somewhere towards the middle part, I, I just got up and I went to the bathroom and then I threw up in the toilet. <laughs> and then I, uh, I didn't want to go. I just had, my stomach was still unsettled. I felt better, you know, but like, oh man, it was gross. And then I just laid on a couch uh, outside in the lobby for a little while. I don't know, I grounded myself and able to go back in. But then even then I knew, I was like, I can't watch this. So whenever they started doing crazy shit, like he gets the sword and he's just able to do fucking anything with it. And so when he started doing that shit, I just would look away, you know, I just like, looked down. And then like, when I heard it stopping, then I would look back up, you know, cause they'd always, and then play this, they played this fucking intense music the whole movie too. It's just like all this like breathing and running and ticking and it was just like, Oh my god, I was so fucking- I just couldn't with this movie. <laughs>
Uh, I did, but let me let me get to some compliments, okay? Let me compliment the film because there were a few things that I did really enjoy, and I was a little sad were wasted in this film. Uh, first of all, we had an eel lady. She was amazing. Uh, she was like this little fucking creature, and this ah, she come up. She's and she was looked like Ursula from Little Mermaid mixed with Pearl from Blade One, that obese vampire in the basement. You know, like they like. But she looked like a mix between those two things, which I fucking loved. She looked great, and she would like unfurl all her tentacles. She had all these like fucking tentacles, and it'd be like hotter, younger eel bitches inside. And I was like, whoa, it's like really cool. She, I, I guess the eel lady was like a dark magic creature who, when Jude Law, who was not the rightful king sitting on the throne, and he knew Arthur was like the rightful king, he like, he would sacrifice either his wife or someone he loved, a woman that he loved, to this eel lady, and then she would give him the power to become death dealer. Uh, they did this really, this is another thing I really liked, is they did this fucking Death Dealer look-alike character. If you don't know who Death Dealer is, check out our Frank Frazetta Greater Creators episode. It's on YouTube. It's the only one you can watch on YouTube. And uh, he's this amazing, the most badass fantasy fucking scary guy, like, ever. Like, you just can't top, like, Death Dealer. And so they just kind of did that. And it looked great. Like, he had this, like, smoke cape. And, like, it actually, they fucking pulled it off. I was really surprised. It was super, he was scary. I really liked it. And in fact, it really made me want a Fire and Ice movie, which Robert Rodriguez is in development with, but he's been saying that shit for years, so it's probably stalled out. I don't really want to see him directed anyways. But this movie did make me, like, go, like, fuck a Arthur movie. Let's make a fucking Frank Frazetta mm. awesome movie. Like, uh, some, you know, some of that shit. But yeah. they're not going to do anything cool like that. Whatever. It's fucking Hollywood. Jude Law was good. He's, you know, settled into that evil uncle role pretty well. You know, he had young Pope, and he had this. Like, he was pretty good. He had a good scene when he was king, and he was, like, ah, to all the crowd, everybody kneeled as he, like, did his hand. And then he went, and then he went, like, all the way around so that his people, like, that were standing behind him on the dais would have to bow, too. It was pretty sick. That was, that was pretty funny. Yeah, the thing about the King Arthur IP... You know, it's like, okay, so Warner Brothers, of course, they see Marvel. Everybody sees Marvel doing great with all these franchises. And they're like, well, what do we have? We've got King Arthur. They heard a pitch of like, we'll turn this into a fucking series and everyone's going to get their own fucking movie and it's going to be this whole thing. And then like it kind of transmuted from there. But then at the end of this movie, they have like, they start introducing the round table, you know, and it was just like, no, like, no, like. We're never going to see Goose Fat Bill again, all right? Like, stop. Like, stop. You know, it was just so embarrassing for me thinking they really thought they were going to make another one of these. I was just like, ugh. The Arthurian legend was very important to me in my childhood. I'd, uh, it was like, as most kids do, I found uh, a film and it happened to be Excalibur and watched it over and over and over again. And, you know, I just saw it. I just saw what the potential was. The problem is, is like, I don't know, they're just not, they're not really doing the IP, though, is the thing. It's like, King Arthur is kind of fucking awesome. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff you can mine in King Arthur. And in fact, I feel like it's been really, like, misrepresented. It's a little convoluted, like, over the, over the centuries. I mean, these are really ancient tales. I mean, they come from a long fucking time ago, okay? Like, like, I don't know, I was reading some 12th century shit or something, some translation of some stuff the other day. It was, like, trying to get all boned up on it. Yeah, there's so much cool stuff, but it's just not in the hands of these idiots. You know, it's just, like, not with this decision-making, not with these executives, not with this fucking Warner Brothers. Like, it's not, like, they're not prepared to make the right decisions and do the right things. And still, I really do think that if you wanted to do an awesome King Arthur thing, you should do, like, a King Arthur show based on Mists of Avalon. I think that that would be fucking huge. I think that would be really awesome. Mists of Avalon, if you haven't read it, it's your theory and legend as told from the female perspective of the female characters. The way it's written is like much more realistic. Like it seems like this could be translated into a Game of Thrones type situation, although not nearly as crazy, but there's still a little bit of sex in it. There's still some violence in it. There's some fucked up shit in it for sure. So uh, yeah, I think Miss Avalon's awesome. And not only is it cool because you got all this King Arthur stuff in it, but it's also really cool because it talks about you know, something I'm interested in, which is when Christianity overtook paganism in England, you know, and it's, that's what it's, like, really about. So it's this really cool core of, like, this fight between these religions and stuff. It's, like, really interesting. 
So, yeah. I don't know. This sucks. This, I don't know. It was bad. <laughs> Sorry, Warner Brothers. You fucked up again. <laughs> you wanted to prophesy. Raise that sword. Show the people the power of Excalibur. The crazy directing and then the music on top of that combined with the edible <laughs> and eating too much popcorn, I think, all contributed to my throwing up. 